Okay, so we're going to pick up where we got to yesterday again, where we're looking at how we can partition numbers to multiply, and using that technique, I know and so. Uh, and then I'm going to throw in a, a technique which I really, really like, which is amazing for particular calculations, for how you can adapt the numbers and uh, find an answer. So it's a, it's a really neat little thing that you can use in multiplication. It's a great tool to have. Now, the general thing that we'll try and do with these videos is show these principles using smaller numbers. And when you understand the principles, you can apply them to, to answer much more challenging calculations. Uh, so let's get started with a recap from where we got to yesterday. So on the topic of building flexibility in calculation, we're going to do a bit of a recap of what we've looked at already, and then we're going to move a little bit further later on. Um, so let's have a look here. We've got a grid that represents 18 multiplied by 7. Um, what I want you to do is pause the video and have a think about the different ways you can break down um, either of those numbers to do that calculation. So the different ways it can be done. Have a go. Pause the video. Okay, and, and let's have a look at a few possibilities. Um, so it could be that you break that grid up into, um, you break the 18 up into 10 lots, into 10 and 8. So 10 lots of 7, uh, which is the green area, 70, and 8 lots of 7, 56 in the white area, and you just add all that together. That's one way you could break that down. Um, another way is rather than breaking up the 18, you could keep the 18 together and you could break up the uh, the 7 into 5 and 2. So you could do the green area is 18 times 5. You could do 18 times 10 and halve it to do that. And then the white area is 2 lots of 18, 36, and then add it all up. So that's another thing you could do. Um, I think this might be my favourite one though, is just thinking, well, I'm going to halve the 18 to make 9. Two, two, it's 2 lots of um, 9 times 7, 63. Um, so, by the way, 126 squares we have in total there. And that, for me, mentally, is the easiest one. Um, equally, it could be that you, you break up the 18, rather than into two pieces, into three pieces. You could have um, six, uh, 18 into three sixes. Um, so, six times seven, three times. That's another way. So, four, three lots of 42. So, different options that we can have. And hopefully, you're building that flexibility. Now let's recap on another skill, which was the idea of I know and so. So again, th this area model shows 14 multiplied by 6 equals 84. Trust me, there should be 84 squares there. I say trust me and there should be. That sounds a bit of a contradiction, doesn't it? Um, so let's have a think. So 14 multiplied by 6 is 84. What would 14 multiplied by 7 be? How how's the picture going to change? It, well, it will be. We, we'll still have 14 um, on the on the top row, but rather than six lots of 14, we're going to have seven lots. So, of course, how much more is going to be another 14? So I can use this to work out this just by adding a 14. Um, let's have a look at another example. Uh, 14 multiplied by 6 is 84. How could I use that to work out 16 multiplied by 6? Uh, to tell the screen either how can I work that out, what will be different, what will the answer be, how is the picture going to look different? Okay, and should we have a look? Well, the thing that stays the same is we're still going to have um, we're, we're still going to have sets of six, but rather than fourteen sets of six, we're going to have sixteen. So, it, well, in total, that's going to be another twelve. Um, so we'll go from eighty-four to ninety-six, and there's the connection. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Fourteen times six is eighty-four. Well, what about twenty-eight times six? What's going to stay the same? What's going to change this time? Okay, and should we, do we t again tell the screen? Tell the screen what's gonna, how's the picture gonna change, or how can I use one to work out the other? Okay, should we have a little look? Well, 14, there's 14 times 6, 28 times 6. It's gonna be another lot of 14 sixes. It's gonna be double, so I can just double the 84. 168 there overall. Um, now that leads us on to today's um, today's lesson where we're looking at multiplication. It's called multiplication which way. We're building up different multiplication strategies for you. We've recapped some of them. I'm going to add another one in and then on tomorrow's video you're going to see all the connections between them. So we're going to um, we're going to look specifically at one new strategy uh, and then you'll choose which way when you when you're performing calculations. So have a look at this, and, and this is a brilliant strategy. If you can understand it in, in, in this small number example, you're going to be able to go really deep and apply your understanding in, in different examples. So, so this array shows 8 multiplied by 3. So I've got 8 3 times. 
Um, now, I know that actually, and I'm going to change the image slightly, so, so you'll see why in a moment. So 8 multiplied by 3 there. Um, now, actually, that's the same as 4 multiplied by 6. It's the same amount. Can you see how I've just taken the, um, the yellow ones and I've put them on the bottom? Now, have a look how the number sentence change, changes. We go from 8 lots of 3, and then we halve the amount on the top. Um, so we go from 8 to 4 dots on the top. Um, and we double the amount on the uh, going down. So rather than eight lots of three, we have four lots of six. And can you see that eight threes and four sixes, it's 24 dots in total. So again, if I have one number, double the other one, I end up with the same answer. Now, that, that can be helpful. It's just another quick example. So let's say five multiplied by six equals 30. And I can think, well, actually, I, I know that if I double one number, like I double the five, make it 10 and halve the other one, halve the 6 to make it 3, the answer will still be 30. Now, it, it's amazing how useful this technique can be, when you understand this, for answering other questions, more difficult questions. Um, so let me show you this one. 25 multiplied by 14. Now, if you're answering this with a grid method, I guess, it, essentially, the, the, the representation for that would look a little bit like this. You would do, um, you would do 20 times 10 for, to work out this, the, the number of squares in this space. And then basically, you will multiply each bit of the 25 by each bit of the 14. So 5 times 10 for this bit. Um, and then we'll have um, 4 times 20 for this bit and 4 times 5 for this bit. Um, and then I'll have to add all that together. So lots of different steps. Well, I've got those four calculations and then the addition. Um, however, if I can use doubling and halving, I, I just know 25 times 14 gives me the same answer as 50 multiplied by 7. Now I've only got one calculation to do, um, 50 times 7. Oh, it's, a, it's such a useful technique for certain calculations. So have a look at this. Which of these questions are made easier by a doubling and a halving strategy? Now, you could answer all of them with a doubling and a halving strategy. Some questions are made easier, and some questions might even be made more difficult using it. Now, pause the video, have a look, and I just want you to think, which questions do you think become easier with a doubling and halving strategy, and why? Okay, well, let, let, let's have a look at some of the possibilities there. Um, now... The ones that I picked out that I thought were easier, here's the first one. I thought, actually, if we halve this 16 and make it an 8, and double the 35 and make it a 70, now, from a lot of different calculations required, I just need to do 8 times 70. Um, 8 7s are 56, so 8 times 70 would be 560. Um, now, have a look at the, the, the reason why these numbers become easier. I go from having a two-digit number when it's halved to a single-digit number, and I go from a number which has got a tens and a ones value to now when I double the, um, the 35, I don't have any ones, so, so it makes the calculation much more straightforward um, or fewer steps. Um, so another one, uh, 1.5 multiplied by 6. Well, it's just the same as, uh, as 3 multiplied by 3, double the 1.5 and halve the 6. I think I find that easier. Um, the last example I chose was actually um, 5 multiplied by 18, because double the 5, it's 10, um, and 10 multiplied by 9. Um, so in some instances, a really useful strategy to have. Not necessarily always, though, like with the other two examples. Now, let me just show you. I was thinking, well, what's my favourite calculation to use this, this technique for? I think it might be this one. 3.5 multiplied by 16. Before you knew that method, there's certain challenges there, or there's at least a lot of steps. But actually, if I just double the 3.5, I get 7. Half the 16, I get 8. 7, 8, 56. Hmm. Now, I wonder which calculation you would think of where you think a doubling and a halving strategy makes the biggest difference for. I, I would love to know that. So again, for today's task, just like normal, click on the blue link underneath the video and it brings up this file. Um, again, the key thing in today is you seeing the connection between different multiplication facts and seeing different strategies that can be used to answer them. So looking at some of the strategies that we've used this week, there's a different ways question here. So can you find different ways to calculate 25 multiplied by 18? When you're answering the I know and so questions, maybe choose one of those sequence or maybe both of them to have a go at. It's nice if you can find the answer, but the thing that's really important is you can see how the calculations are linked now, now, maybe you want to design your own sequence of questions and think, the, think about the links between them. 
And understanding those links is the thing we're really working towards. Equally, there's another question at the bottom about doubling and halving. So of those questions, which are made easier using that doubling and halving strategy? Why are some questions made easier by a doubling and halving strategy and not others? Um, it'd be great to get your thoughts on that, uh, see your examples coming through. The answers are underneath like, like normal. And I hope those, those activities really help you to see links between different multiplication questions and tasks. I'll, I'll see you again tomorrow.